Okay. So today we have to start with question number four, and it's May June 2023, paper 2 2. So, question number four In industry, ethanol is made by reacting ethene with the steam in the presence of phosphoric acid. So, if you recall that, this is due to because it acts as a catalyst over here. Okay, use the bond energy values in table 4.1. To calculate the enthalpy change delta HR for a reaction one. Okay, so if you recall the formula, uh, that to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction, the formula is the energy used in bonds which are broken. The bond energy for the bonds which are broken <laughs> minus the bond the in bond energy for the bonds which are formed. So delta HR is equals to bond broken minus bond formed. Okay. Uh, now, so if I make the equation, if I just make the displayed formula from the equation, so it's an ethene C2H4, so it means there is a carbon-carbon double bond and each carbon has a single bond with the hydrogen, which is reacting with water. And here we are getting two carbons. One carbon has... And there is a single bond now. One carbon got the hydrogen from the water and the other carbon got the OH from the water. Okay. Now, let's highlight. If you see, this bond is broken, right? And this bond is broken. And if you see the bond forms, so this bond is formed. This bond is formed. And this bond is formed. So if you see, the bond broken is a carbon-carbon double bond, right? So its bond energy is over here. So 610. Our OH bond is broken. Its bond energy is over here. So 460. A carbon carbon single bond is made. Right? Its bond energy is over here. 360. A carbon hydrogen bond is made. Its bond energy is over here. 410. A carbon oxygen single bond is made. No, sorry, it's 360 is over here. A carbon carbon single bond is made, which is over here, 350. So see, they have given you carbon carbon double bond, carbon carbon triple bond in the same way, carbon oxygen single bond, carbon oxygen double bond. So you have to figure it out which bond is in the structure. So we got the bond energies, right? Now, we are going to put in the formula that the enthalpy change of a reaction is equal to bond energy for a bond broken. So the bond broken are these two, 610 and plus 460 minus bonds formed. So it is 410 plus 350 plus 360. Yes, can anyone add them and tell me the answer, please? At 610 and 460, if I add them 1000, it is going to be 1070, right? If you add them 710, 710 and 4, 1120, if I'm not wrong. So if you subtract them, what you will get, you will get 50 and it, it's a minus 50. It's a minus 50 kilojoule per mole. Is this clear to all of you? <coughs> yes, is it clear? Okay. Now, question number four B part reaction one reaches equilibrium at constant temperature and pressure. Okay. Reduce what effect increasing the pressure will have on the amount of ethanol 
in the new equilibrium mixture. Okay, so increasing the pressure, use the check here principle to explain your answer. Okay, we know when we increase the pressure, if you recall, increasing the pressure, equilibrium shifts to lesser moles of gases. So if you look over here, there is a one mole of gas over here and there are two moles of gas over here. So if we increase the pressure, equilibrium shifts towards the right. So more moles of ethanol is formed, right? So that's what they have, I have asked you that the amount of ethanol. So the amount of ethanol in this ethanol increases is because equilibrium shifts to right. as uh, your shifts to right to reduce the excess pressure. That's what, you know, the Tatlier principle say that it shifts in a way in towards the direction to reduce the effect or to, to reduce the change. So equilibrium shifts to the right to reduce the pressure as right side has lesser moles of gases. Is this clear to all of you? So, the effect of increasing pressure on amount, as they have asked you, reduce the effect of increasing pressure will have on the amount of ethanol. So, we know when the pressure is increased, equilibrium shifts to the lesser moles of the gas. If you see over here, all of them are gases. And the product side has a one mole and the reactant side has a two moles, right? So, when we increase the pressure, equilibrium shifts towards the right as there are lesser moles. So what happens to the amount of ethanol? It increases. And there is we have an explanation. It, why it is shift to the right to reduce the excess pressure, which we have applied. And why is it why the pressure is reduced? Because there has a lesser moles of gas. So when the product will form, the number of moles gets reduced. And as a result, the pressure will reduce. Is this clear to all of you? Now, SIPA, the mechanism for the reaction one can be described in three steps, okay? Step one, step two, and for reaction one, step one and two for reaction one are shown in figure 4.1, okay? So here we got the step one and step two. Okay, describe the behavior of H3PO4 in step one, figure four in figure 4.1, explain your answer. Okay. So, what is the behavior of H3PO4 in step one? Yes. And you have to explain the answer as well. So, if you see, it is breaking this bond. And as a result, when this bond is breaking, and it's broken heterolytically. So it means H positive is going to be released and that is accepted by this carbon. Right? Walikum Aslam Hassan. So it means 
that the H positive is released. And if the H positive is released, it means that its behavior is an acid because it is donating the hydrogen ion, the H positive ion. Is this understandable to all of you? <coughs> so I'm going to write over here at part one that its behavior is acidic in step one as it is donating a proton a hydrogen ion. Is this clear to all of you? Now, identify the species that behave as an electrophile in step two. In figure 4.1, explain your answer. So we know the electrophile is the one which has a, it is electron deficient. And the one which has an electron deficient, it accepts the electron, right? So if you see over here, this one has a positive charge. It's an electron deficient and oxygen is sharing its pair of electron. And as a result, this carbon is accepting that pair of electron. So that's why this one is an electrophile. So I'm going to write over here, uh, CH3. CH2 positive act as an electrophile or behave as an electrophile because it is accepting electrons or you can write it because it's it is accepting a pair of electrons. Is this clear to all of you? <coughs> okay. Now third part. Complete figure 4.2. Okay. To show the mechanism of for step three for reaction one, include charges, dipoles, lone pairs of electrons and curly arrows as appropriate. So, if you see this step three and this is step two, in step two we got this and as far as you guys know that as I have mentioned over here, Uh, that the behavior of a, you know, phosphoric acid is a catalyst and see the alcohol is formed. So if you see in this, you are getting the alcohol, the final product and phosphoric acid restored. So it acts as a catalyst. So if you see this oxygen has a positive charge and this oxygen over here is a negative charge. And this oxygen, which has a negative charge, now have a bond with the hydrogen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a lone pair over here. Because of this lone pair, it is going to accept this hydrogen. And when it do this, at the same time, the oxygen, which becomes electron deficient, breaks the pair of electron from the hydrogen and do like this. So we put the lone pair pair, we put the curly arrows and there is no dipole needed because there is all, all, all already a positive and a negative sign. <laughs> is this clear to all of you? So that's it. And as a result, this, the oxygen releases the hydrogen and the oxygen of the phosphate hydrogen phosphate ion accepts the H positive and as a result as it is uh, phosphoric acid is restored shows that it's a catalyst. Okay, now part four, describe how a catalyst affects a reaction, explain your answer. So what we know about catalyst that it increases the rate of reaction, right?
and how it do so not just lowers the activation energy bunny actually by it actually provides the alternative path for the reaction to occur which has a lower kinetic activation energy by providing alternate route of lower activation energy. Lower activation. Is this clear? There is a new route and that new route has a lower activation. Now part five. Use figure 4.1 and 4.2 to justify why phosphoric acid described as a catalyst in reaction 1. Okay. So, as you see in figure 4.1, that is over here, that phosphoric acid turns into this. So, it is being used up during the reaction. And then, over here, if you see, this ion again restored as a phosphoric acid. So you can write it is because at the end of the reaction phosphoric acid is reformed or regenerated or restored yes very good bunny okay Propene also reacts with the steam a mixture of organic products is produced explain why propane to all is produced in the higher yield. Yes. So if you recall a propene, let me show you over here. That is a propene. When it reacts with the steam, you will get two products. One is this propane to all and the other one is this propane one all. So they are saying that this is major and they are asking you that it's as a high yield. That's why I'm saying it major. Yes, but why you have to explain? So it is because it is formed by the intermediate, which is more stable. That is the actual reason. So propane to all is produced in the higher yield because it produced from a more stable intermediate and what is that intermediate carbocation which has more alkyl groups hence more positive inductive effect Yeah. 
Yes, is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now, B part, describe the covalent bonds present between the carbon atoms in an ethene molecule by completing table 4.1. Type of orbitals involved in sigma bond and pi bond and how the orbital overlap. So we know uh, the sigma bond orbital overlap head to head way or linear way or direct way, right? And in pi bond, the over the orbitals overlapped in a sideways fashion. Is this clear to all of you? And if you recall in that the sideways, the orbitals which overlapped in a sideways are PP orbitals. So I'm going to put P and P. Okay. And they are asking about ethene. So in ethene, there is a carbon-carbon double bond, right? It's like this. So the orbital which form a sigma bond is the hybridized orbital and the hybridization would be sp2 because it has a one pi bond and one pi bond means it's one p orbital didn't undergo hybridization so only two p orbitals undergo hybridization so the sp2 and it's the both the atoms have sp2 hybridization so both the uh, atoms sp2 orbitals overlap with each other and they overlap with each other in a head to head way to form a sigma bond and p orbitals of both the atoms overlap with each other to form a pi bond and that type of and they the way they overlap is a sideways is this clear to all of you okay now, describe structural isomerism. So, molecules having same molecular formula but different structure or instead you can write different structural formula as well <coughs> yeah yes Hassan. good okay and B are structural isomers with the molecular formula C5H10O. So if you look at this small gen, this isn't it? It have a this general formula. Okay, they are both straight chain molecules with only one functional group. If this is the general formula and they have a one functional group, so it can be an aldehyde or ketone because this general formula is often is aldehyde compounds have ketone compounds have and the compounds having a carbon-carbon double bond and OH group both. But see, there are two functional groups in it. And as they say that one functional group, so it means this is either aldehyde or a ketone. Is this clear to all of you? Table 5.1 describes observation when a separate samples of A and B are added to different reagents. Okay. With 2,4-dinitrophenyl, orange precipitates, orange precipitates. So it means... It can be an aldehyde or ketone and it can be an aldehyde or ketone or otherwise you can say it's a carbonyl, right? With tolerance reagent, silver mirror. So it shows that it's an aldehyde and no reaction. So it means it's an ketone. It's a ketone. Yes. With aqueous alkaline iodine, it's no reaction. So it means it's an aldehyde, but it has no this group. And no reaction with aqueous alkaline iodine. So it also has no this group. If they would have this group, a methyl bonded to a carbonyl, then over here we are going to show, observe a yellow precipitate. Okay, now they are saying, name the functional group present in both A and B. So both have a 
one functional group, the common one is a called carbonyl. Now we are saying draw the structure of A and B. Okay. So as we know, A is an aldehyde and B is in ketone and the formula has five carbons. Okay. So what I can do? One, two, three, four, five. A is an aldehyde, right? So I'll put a double bond O over here and a hydrogen. So see, it becomes ketone. Now I have to put the hydrogens, three hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Now one, one, two, three, four, five. Now the thing is that I can't, it's a ketone, right? But I cannot make this ketone because I got to know that this group is not there. So I have to put the C double bond O in the middle. So see, it is bonded to a CH2 and then CH3. On the other side, it is bonded to a CH2 and then CH3. Now, is this understandable to all of you? So we got in the structure of A and B. Okay. Now, C is a structural isomer of A and B. Okay. C is a straight chain and has a two functional group. So see, I, what I have told you, there is a third possibility that a carbon-carbon double bond and a OH. So as they have say, said that it is a two functional group, so it means C must have a carbon-carbon double bond and a OH both. She, C shows only one type of stereoisomerism. <laughs> okay. Okay. Table 5.1 describes observation when separate samples of C are added to a different reagents with 2, 4 D and pH no reaction. So it means no C double bond O group, right? Bromine orange to colorless. So C carbon carbon double bond is present with alkaline aqueous iodine yellow precipitate. So it means that it's an alcohol. So that alcohol must has a this structure. Is this clear? Now they ask you to draw the structure of C in the box. Okay. So what we got to know that CH3. Okay. And it's again, the molecular formula is C5H10O, right? So CH3, C, H, O, H. Then the third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. Okay, now I have to put a double bond. If you see, isn't it this carbon becomes an optical? So if it's become optical, so it means it can show us this trans isomerism. Is this, oh, sorry, it can show optic, uh, it, this carbon becomes chiral. And if it, this carbon becomes chiral, so it means it can show a optical isomerism. Is this clear? Is this understandable? Now, see this thing, it see show only one type of stereoisomerism. So if the student did this, like put a H over here and double bond over here, and then CH and then CH3. Now, if DC, this double bonded carbon has a one hydrogen and on other side CH3 and this double bonded carbon has a one hydrogen and on the other side, this whole group. So this can show cistrans and this can show optical isomerism both. So it is showing two type of stereoisomerism. So it is not C because they have mentioned over here that it show only one type of stereoisomerism and we are getting a chiral carbon over here. So we cannot put a double bond over here because as they have instructed that it can show only one type of stereoisomerism. So I am going to put a double bond over here. So if I put a double bond over here, so this carbon has a two same group. So this double bond cannot show cistrans isomerism. So only one type of isomerism is shown due to a chiral carbon. Now, if you look at the molecular formula, you are going to get the same molecular formula C5H10O. 
Is this clear to all of you? And we are fulfilling all the conditions provided by the examiner to functional groups, one type of stereoisomerism. And due to this, what structure must has, due to this, what structure must has, and due to this, what structure must not has. Okay. Name the type of stereoisomerism shown by the molecules of C. So we have already identified that this is an optical isomerism, which is a type of stereoisomerism. Is this clear? Yes, if any one of you has any confusion from here, please ask. Just give me a minute. Okay. Now we have a D part. D reacts in the presence of a sulfuric acid catalyst to form E and water. Okay. The structure of E is shown in figure 5.1. And if you see, E has a this group and this functional group is an aster. Right. Name the functional group present in E. So we have identified that it's an ester. Uh, ask me after the class, Omar, you can WhatsApp me. So it's an ester. Now identify the type of reaction that occurs when D reacts to form E. So see. E is the ester and along with the ester we are getting water. Yes, very good Bunny. So it's a condensation reaction. Now, they are asking in part 3, draw the structure of D in the box. Okay, so if you see as this bond is ester, so it must be broken down to get back the reactants. So if you move back from here, you would have this structure. A O over here and a C double bond O over here. So this O is bonded to H making it alcohol and double bond O is bonded to OH making it carboxylic acid. Because we know that carboxylic acid and alcohol reacts to form an ester. So if you start numbering, this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 carbons. Second carbon has a OH and the fifth carbon is carboxylic acid. Or the other way, because carbon carboxylic acid carbon is always a carbon 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are 5 carbons. First carbon is carboxylic acid and fifth one is alcohol. So now it's very easy to make 2, 3, four, five, right? So carbon number one has a, is a carboxylic acid. So I'll put a C double bond O, OH over here. And carbon number four has a OH. So I'm going to put a OH over here as it's an alcohol. Is this clear to all of you? Now, Part 4. The infrared spectrum of E is shown in figure 5.2. And we know E was an ester. E is an ester. <coughs> and they have shown us that it has a this form. This was their the skeletal formula. Okay. Now they have given you the infrared spectrum. 
use figure 5.2 and table 5.3 to predict two differences in the absorptions above 1500 cm cube of the infrared spectrum of D compared to E. Explain your answer. Okay. So that is E. Right? And this is the structure of E. Oh, this is the spectrum of E. And D is this. Let me draw the D over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fourth carbon has a OH. And carbon number 1 is C-O-O-H. Okay. So, this one has a OH of alcohol and OH of carboxylic acid. And E doesn't have either E OH, right? So, OH of carboxyl has the peak or the absorbance at 2500 to 3000. And OH hydroxy, which means the alcohol OH has a peak or absorbance at 3200 and 3600. These both are present in compound B and not present in compound E. So that's two marks. So you can write two, and they have asked you to do, write two differences. So we'll write these two. N, D, absorption at 2500 to 3000 due to OH of carboxyl and absorption at 32,100 to 3,600 and it's a centimeter inverse. You have to mention the unit as well. Due to OH of hydroxy. are present and both of these absorptions are not present in the, the spectra of E shown above. Is this clear to all of you? Because if you see D has one, two, three, four, five. Fourth carbon has a OH and the first carbon has a carboxylic acid. So there are two OH groups and E has a this structure O C double bond O and this one. So is this clear to all of you? So we are ended with this paper. And now uh, we will continue from Monday the new paper, inshallah. So see you everyone on Monday. And take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.